Hey there, I'm Anna Campbell. And I'm Andrew Villegas. We both work as editors on Kian Arwi. We are just two of the many people who help make this show. And we want Kian Arwi to be a place to hear stories of Latino joy. It's the kind of show we always wanted to hear in our podcast feeds. So our team here at Colorado Public Radio made that show for you. If you care about these kinds of stories, there's an easy thing you can do to help. Take a moment and tell two friends about the show. That's it. Tell a friend or two. Thanks for listening and for helping to spread the word about Gen Are We. I'll always remember when I stopped playing baseball. My dad goes, ah, mijo, he goes, I knew you weren't going to make it. You never tried hard enough. You didn't run out. Your feet were nailed to the ground. You never moved quick enough. Listen, my dad is an amazing man. I love him, but I just think he just had this vision of being me being like the next left fielder for the LA Dodgers, right? You know, it's interesting. I look, I think about that comment all the time and like let my dad down. Alan Benavides is a lot of things. He's Nicaraguense, first-generation American. But one thing he is not is a player for the Los Angeles Dodgers. And this memory he carries with him of how he disappointed his father is one that most of us can probably relate to. That thought didn't leave his mind for decades until he found himself wearing a World Series ring. From Colorado Public Radio, this is Quien Are We? Exploring what it means to be Latino or Hispanic or Chicano or however you identify and diving into the beautiful things that make us who we are. I'm May Ortega. This time, we'll hear about a man who put it all on the line to make his dreams come true. And they came to life through baseball and butterflies. Being Latino is something that I'm very proud of. I have uh, grew up in born in East L.A. You know, I didn't speak English until I was almost seven. So we go to this, like, Catholic school, and they had to wear these, like, light blue tops that, you know, it was this uniform. But my mom didn't have it, so she sent me in the blue corduroy pants and sent me in this light blue guayabera. And I'll always remember going to the school and, like, being different. You know what a guayabera is. I didn't know what they were called until Alan told me, but you've seen them. They're button-up shirts with these two skinny columns of pleated fabric running down the front and back. They're very popular in Latin America. Señores wear them all the time. This story about going to Catholic school in a guayabera is just one instance in Alan's life when he felt unique. Recognizing that you are different was interesting for me to learn, but I really embraced it. And really, I always think about my parents and the road it took them to get here. My mom moved here in the mid-60s, and my dad moved here in the early 70s. So they actually met in L.A. And so they met at a dance, and, you know, a year later, Alan Benavides came up. Amazing. I know, it's pretty cool. I have one of those (laughs) funny names, right? Like, you know, you asked me, so funny, you asked me earlier, do I call you Alan or Alan? And I always say Alan because uh, Alan Butler adopted my mom. Like kind of brought her in from Nicaragua. A, a white, white man. man. Mm-hmm. Yes, I'm named after him. And then my middle name, Jose, is after my dad, Jose Benavides. A lot of different activities made up your life growing up. I mean, a big part of your life is centered around baseball. So what role did baseball play when you were younger? So baseball in Nicaragua is bigger than soccer. And my dad Mm -hmm. loves baseball. In fact, I had a tío, my tío Sergio, Mm -hmm. uh, my mom's brother. I never knew his name was Sergio (laughs) until I was an adult. Because I always called him tío Cacha because he was a catcher. (laughs) in high school baseball. So everybody called him Kachir. Wow. I always thought his name was Kachir. So I called him Tio Kachir. <laughs> and so anyways, but he would always play baseball with me. And, and I was a catcher because he taught me to be a catcher. And sure. I played it through Little League. And my dad's dream was always, you know, to, for me to make it to the big leagues. Unfortunately, of course. I'm too short and too fat and <laughs> I would never make it. But I absolutely love the game. 
Allen might not have had the height to become a major leaguer, but his love for the game was as big as anyone's. Some of my favorite memories were leaving Dodger Stadium in a sea of red brake lights in front of me and like just laughing at how long it took to get out and hearing my mom and dad just like fight and argue about how long it took and why they should have left in the seventh inning and how mad my dad was because I wanted to stay till the end of the game. And and are you still a Dodgers fan to this oh, day? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm still a Dodgers fan. I think my mom is probably the biggest baseball fan in the family. Wow. Your mom. Oh. Interesting. What does she do that shows that she's such a fan? Oh, well, like, I mean, like my mom used to be all about novelas, right? She would watch all of them. But now it's just about the Dodgers. If the Dodgers are playing on the tube. Like she's watching it. My mom goes to bed at 830. She's asleep on the couch. But if the Dodgers are playing and it's extra innings, I can call my mom at 11 o'clock and be like, oh, my God, did you see Bellinger's home run? And she's oh, like, my God. Oh. So, yeah, baseball runs deep through Alan's blood as deeply as any other part of his identity. He needed to be part of the game beyond sitting in the stands. But Alan didn't know anyone in the industry. Getting a foot in the door seemed impossible. So he had to get real and put that dream to rest. At least for a while. I graduated from the University of California at Santa Cruz in 1999. Mm -hmm. Worked in the film industry for a few years. Met my wife and had a baby. <laughs> and decided that, you know, Hollywood wasn't all it was cracked up to be. Lots of hours, all year round. I couldn't see the baby. But I decided to make a career change. Mm -hmm. And in 2004, the baseball winter meetings were happening in Anaheim. The winter meetings are during MLB's offseason, where reps for every major and minor league team meet to do business, network. It's basically a convention which was just down the road. I told my wife, I'm like, you know what? I'm going to put a suit on and see what I can find. Okay. And so I went in and I just started handing out resumes. I was way older than everybody else. Oh, no. <laughs> I was like, you know, I'm like five years out of college. I'm married. Everybody that's at the winter meetings has got a suit that's two sizes too big for them. They all have a backpack on. They all have their name tags. And I'm like, trying to get the same job these kids are trying to get. Got a job offer at half of what I was making. Dang. But wanted to pursue the dream, wanted to work in sports. Staying in baseball's orbit was a labor of love. And because chasing your dreams can often come with some financial stress and he had a baby to feed, Alan had to ask his dad something that no adult kid wants to ask their parents. You know, I'm married. I got a kid. And I told my dad, I'm like, hey, puppy, um, I really want to take this job. I'm going to make a go at it in baseball. And uh, I need to move home with my wife and my son because I'm not going to make any money. And he was like, what? <gasps> that conversation. Like, oh, my God. How did you feel oh. having that talk with him? Oh, it was weird because my dad was like, Mijo, he, he's like, uh, it's time to get a job. It, you know, like, let's sell some insurance. You're bilingual, like State Farm, all state. Like, go to, let's get a job at a bank. Ah, and I'm sure. like, I don't want that. I'm like, I want to work in entertainment. I want to work in sports. I love, you know, this is this is my dream. And he goes, all right. He goes, I'll give you one year. And so we moved home and thankfully my wife was like, are you sure? And I'm like, yeah, I'm like, I can do this. But breaking into baseball would be even harder than Alan expected. That's coming up after a quick break. Hey, my name's Luis Antonio Perez. I'm the lead producer of Can Are We? I'm just one of many people who help make this podcast. Representation is something that's extremely important to me, especially as a Latino creator. It's part of our shared mission in creating this show. You can help our mission by just taking a moment to give Can Are We? a rating or review on whatever podcast app you use. 
it really makes a difference in helping people find the show and elevating las voces lindas de nuestra gente latina. Thank you for supporting us and celebrating Latinidad with Colorado Public Radio. Alan Benavides focused all his efforts on the impossible dream of breaking into the baseball industry. That meant putting it all on the line, quitting his job, moving in with his parents. So Alan was looking for literally any job with any team at any level. It just had to be in baseball. And finally, he got a bite from a minor league club that was a two-hour drive from his parents' place in L.A. It was ticket sales. And they okay. said, you know, we're going to give you a commission, you know, and I just broke that commission record and made it work really well. And within a year, I was able to move out there and, you know, and just kind of got elevated in management. He was happy where he was at, And he was good at it. He was working for a small team, not super duper far from his hometown. He had a great mind for marketing. People liked his ideas. And people in power around the minor league caught wind of Alan's good work. One day, he answered the phone, and it's his boss with an offer out of left field. My boss says, hey, uh, they're asking about you if you're interested for this position in Eugene. And I'm like, nah, I'm not really interested. I remember telling Mm -hmm. our owner, the guy who owned our team in Lake Elsinore, and he goes, you know, he says, there's only like a hundred of these jobs available, 160 of these jobs available. They're not very, it's an opportunity. You should really consider it. His boss was talking about an opening as a general manager for another minor league team. This one located almost 900 miles north in Eugene, Oregon. And his team's owner was not being dramatic when he said these positions are rare. So Alan figured, why not check it out? And he hopped on a plane to Oregon. I was, it was December 22nd, 2004, and the rain was coming in sideways. I'm from <sighs> Southern California. I'm like, what is this? Yeah. And it wasn't like a The drive from the airport to the city isn't the prettiest drive. And my (laughs) wife and I were like, "Uh." (laughs) Not a great first impression. It must have been freezing. Oh, my Uh, gosh. Oh, it was so cold. Freezing rain far from home. And the 13-hour drive would probably make it harder for Alan to go to Dodger Stadium. There were cons, but some pros, too. It really was a -a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, and Alan was ready for it. He thought about all the work he'd put in in California, the grueling drives, the long hours, living under his parents' roof with his wife and baby. Here was his chance to run a professional baseball team. And the Emeralds have a pretty good track record of developing players who go on to become major league all-stars. If you follow baseball, you probably know the names Trey Turner and Eloy Jimenez. They are both former Emeralds, and they're not the only ones. Allen accepted the offer and became general manager of the Northwest League Eugene Emeralds. This was a role that Alan had only ever dreamed of having. I mean, he was now in charge of running a whole team of minor league baseball. He was among the most powerful people in the organization. He decided what the Emeralds did in the community, their winning strategies. He was the boss. Let's not forget that Alan was a bit far from home. While he was learning the ropes at his new job and settling into Eugene, he experienced some culture shock. That's a huge change, going from L.A., born and raised there, where, I mean, I would say there's a good amount of other Latinos, other brown people, and then you lot. move here, where I did some research, and Eugene is 83% white, um, wow. and you're from a place that's known for its... Hispanic culture. So, I mean, how did you feel when you moved there when it comes to being a Latino, moving to this really white place? How did that go for you? I never felt more brown in my life. 
in, in good though. Like, it didn't mean, and I don't mean that in a bad way. Eugene is uh-huh. super loving and accepting, but quickly realized that I'm different, right? When I did think, I, I said earlier, I didn't think I had an accent. People were like, God, you speak different. Like, um, wow. And, I'm, and maybe I'm like, oh, like in Southern California. And they're like, no, it's just kind of, you know, and it wasn't, it was just kind of weird little things like that. Huh. You, your last name means welcome, right? And I'm like, no, it does, it's not bienvenidos. No. And the way you people pronounce the name. And I mean, I got to tell you, there were, I, to this day, people still can't pronounce my name. I've gotten so used to it that like, I don't even, it doesn't even bother me anymore. Like, I've seen every which way you can spell my last name. And I really don't think it's that hard. Benavides. Yeah, I don't think so either. So how do they, how do other people say your name over there? Uh, Benavides, Bienvenides. So Alan had struggled a bit to fit in. It was the Guayavera conundrum all over again. Then he was presented with a challenge that would lead him to collaborate with the Latinos in Eugene. When you look at what the demographics of Latin players are, they're from Puerto Rico, they're Dominican, they're New Mexican, they're Panamanian, Colombian, like they're Venezuelan, right? They're from all over Latin America. But when you look at our fan base, especially in Eugene, it's not reflected that way, right? The Latino base in Eugene is growing. And so how do we kind of adapt to that and and bring, you know, more Latin fans out? These demographic changes happening in Eugene were happening all over the country. So minor league baseball created La Copa de la Diversión, or the Fun Cup. The goal of La Copa is to encourage more Latinos to come to their games by being more inclusive of Latin American cultures. As part of La Copa, every minor league team changes their name and their mascot to something that's more Latino-centric. And those teams will play with that branding several times a year. The Albuquerque Isotopes become Los Mariachis de Nuevo México. There's a team in San Antonio called the Missions who turn into the Flying Chanclas. That's one of my favorites. When it came time for Allen and the Emeralds to pick their Latino-centric name, the league gave some interesting options. Minor League Baseball had suggested some names to us, and they were like, why don't you guys consider doing, like, instead of being, like, the Eugene Emeralds for some games, why don't you guys, like, Los Aceraderos, the Sawmillers, you know, it's the Northwest. So they gave us three choices, and they were, like, Los Aceraderos, Los Leñadores, the, the, the Lumberjacks, and then the last one was Los Exploradores. Ah. Explorers, like, Lewis and Clark. When they said that to me, I was like, ah, <laughs> like, if we're trying to, like, you know, let's think, you know, I go, hey, you know, time out, give me a week. Let me let me reach out to the community here. And so I reached out to some local like leaders and elders and activists and people who had been here a long time and got them in a room with high school folks and seniors and and said, hey, this is this is kind of like the license I've been given to come up with this new brand for our community. Um, I'm Latino, but I'm not Latino in this community. Was that hard for you to tell other people to admit to like I'm Latino but I'm not Latino from here. It's interesting that you say that because I've never had an issue with that because I think I'm very fair skinned and so I think people a lot of times look at me that I'm more white than Latino right? Even though I'm first generation I speak Spanish but I'm not Latino in this community and I recognize that and and I own that. Like that it's true. I'm trying to create some roots here with the Latino community. And that's what this whole like project was about. Choosing the right mascot was a big deal, not only to Alan, but to a lot of Latinos who grew up in Eugene. You want something that will represent your gente, that will appeal to the people you're trying to welcome to baseball games possibly for the first time. This was a big responsibility, and Alan knew that. And these folks, they, 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 grabbed, they grabbed this idea, and I kind of told them, like, the ideas that we were talking about, leñadores, aceraderos. Mm-hmm. And when I said exploradores, like, the group just, like, it was like this audible gasp, like, <gasps> uh, yeah, you know, yeah. like, they're like, no. No, you know? and not so, the move. <laughs> not the move you want. And so yeah. we came up with Monarcas Baseball. 
right? Monarca, the monarch butterfly has one of the largest migratory patterns in the world. Yeah. Um, we came up with the art and the logo. It's 33 dots representing all 33 countries of Latin America. Mm -hmm. Oregon's the 33rd state. It tells a, a huge story. It is an understatement to say I love the Monarca's logo. Truly, it is a work of art, especially in the world of baseball, where most team logos tend to lean more towards simplicity. For the Monarca, there is so much meaning packed into it. So just picture a monarch butterfly with its orange and black wings spread out, and she's wearing a little gold crown because monarch. She's got those 33 dots Alan mentioned, some mountains across the wings to represent a beloved Oregonian mountain range, and my favorite part, an Aztec figure called Olin is in the inner part of each wing. Olin represents to move and act with all your heart and to be all in, in everything you do. Once the name was selected and the incredible logo finalized, Alan and the team really leaned into it. Every Sunday, we're Monarcas Baseball. We, we've had Mariachis ah. do the national anthem. We've had cumbia bands playing on the concourse. We've had a little mercado set up out by the gates when people are walking in with oh my stamp Latin owned uh, businesses from Springfield. You know, you get our, and, and then my favorite was, we, we I, it, you know how hard to find low riders in Eugene, Oregon? Oh, I can't even, oh, tell me how. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> I mean, they're there, but they're just, you just don't see them like driving down by, you know, I-5. And so found some low riders and, you know, had them bring in our mascot and on the field and the low riders are jumping up and down oh on the field. Oh my God, that's amazing. It was awesome. It was wow. so cool. And how did you feel? Like, I know it was a community effort, but you're one of the people who helped make that happen. How did that make you feel? Oh, I was so proud. Like, I just love our culture. I love the celebration yeah. that we do. I love the festive atmosphere that Latinos bring to almost any event. Um, I love seeing the low riders parked out in front of the ballpark and seeing a bunch of like old white guys taking pictures with like the owners and like like, like Latino guys are like you know with their, with their sunglasses and the like in, in the in, in the shirts and the dress and everyone's just taking pictures and selfies in front of the cars. I was like, yes, this is <laughs> this is what I want. Even though he's been in this role for more than a decade, Allen is still one of only a few Latino GMs in American baseball. I really hope that I can people see me as somebody that can try to be a conduit or a bridge, like you know, between culturally different people in our society here in Eugene. It was a long, winding road, but Allen has accomplished a lot in his baseball career. I mean, the Emeralds won the championship in 2021. But Allen has also learned that he can't have it all. Remember, Allen and his mom are fierce Dodgers fans. His mom, probably more than him. Well, one of baseball's toughest and oldest rivalries is between the Dodgers and the San Francisco Giants. Every few years, the minor teams change the major teams they're affiliated with. Take a guess at which major team the Emeralds are affiliated with now. I'll always remember when we signed to the Giants. Uh, this was last year when we got the new affiliation of the San Francisco Giants. My mom calls me and she goes, hey, mijo, I love you, but I'm never wearing your stuff again. I'm never. And I'm like, mom, come on, like, relax. <laughs> the grand shame of the family. <laughs> I mean, talk about irony. Leading a minor team from off the field, being affiliated with your family's team's top opponent, this was not what Alan or his dad imagined for him when he was a kid. But hey, things worked out pretty well. Remember how Alan said that he felt like he had let his dad down because he didn't make it onto a major league team? 
Well, eventually, his work in Eugene did lead to some big payoff from the majors. In 2016, the Chicago Cubs won the World Series. And at the Mm -hmm. time, we were the short season affiliate for the Chicago Cubs. And so when the Cubs won the World Series, the Cubs graciously gave me as the general manager of the team a World Series ring. The same (laughs) ring the players got. It says Benavides on the ring. It's got my name. It's a world. It's probably like the most cherished championship ring. Yeah, the Cubs are my team too, even though I'm from Texas. I love them. So that's amazing. That is incredible. And so I'll I'll always remember, I showed it to my dad and I go, Papi, I'm like, I just, I gave him the ring so he could hold it, take a picture with it. And I was like, hey man, I made it. I know, I know it wasn't like how you thought, but you know, I made it to the big leagues. You know, I got got my, got my ring. The success to me isn't necessarily what we've done from our wins and losses, but it's what we've been able to do in the community year round. Those to me are the huge W's that we have, honestly. Like I love the power that this team has in the community and that's where I find the most joy. There you go, dream achieved. Alan Benavides is the general manager for the Eugene Emeralds, also known as Las Monarcas de Eugene. A big thanks to Alan for sharing this story with me so I could share it with you. I'm May Ortega. This episode was produced by me with mixing by Pedro Lumbrano, who also wrote our theme music. And it was edited by Aaron Jones and Anna Campbell. You can find a list of everybody who helped make this episode in the show notes. Quien Are We is a production of Colorado Public Radio. 